Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Slam Lens, we're going to go through Richard's lab. We're going to see every step of how color film and black and white film are processed. We'll see it right from the beginning to the end, so you know exactly where your film goes when you set it off to the lab. So let's get started and see what we can do. Everybody needs lights, and we're giving away two lights from F&B this month. So get over to theslamlens.com backslash giveaway and sign up to win. We're here at Richard Photo Lab. I've always wanted to come to this place and see how they process our film. So here we are, and this is... Albany, nice to meet you. Tell us what's here, and I mean, we've seen our film here, but never been here before, so... Yeah, well, we're a pro lab. We've been in business for about 50 years. We um, scan and print photographers' work. We work with photographers all around the world. So what we want to do today is just see the step-by-step -step process as it goes through the entire lab, and just uh, see it come out the other end. Perfect, let's uh, get back there. Let's go. We just got all the film boxes for the day, so our team is unpackaging all the film and is about to write up all the orders to put them into production. We're double checking their count to make sure we have all the rolls. We don't want to lose any rolls. We need to make sure that we have everything. Yeah. So that's what we're doing here. All right, so once we get to processing, uh, the processors are gonna sort the film between color and black and white because we have two different dark rooms for that. So they sort the film and then they will put it onto racks. They prep the film on racks because obviously everything has to be done in the dark room, the but dark they room, prep yep. it outside. Okay, so this is what it means to prep the film here? Yeah, so what's really important in this process is applying the twin check sticker. So all film has a twin check sticker. That's what's going to um, align it with the actual order that it comes with. Because right now you don't see any order. So the only thing that is telling us what order it comes from is the twin check sticker. This is really, really important uh, because it keeps all the film organized throughout the lab. Something that we're really proud of is that we use dip and dunk processors. A lot of labs still use pull through machines that can damage your film. Um, and you know, it might be quicker to process your film that way, but it's not the best way to process your film. We use dip and dunk processors. That means that your film is literally dipping into a Each dunk chemistry. tank and it's only touching the chemistry the entire time. It's not touching anything else. I'm gonna sneak in the magic door here. Okay, so this is going into where the film's actually dipped and dunked. Yes, right? it is. It's being well, dipped and go. dunked right now. Here I am <laughs> in the developing area. Imagine that. <laughs> there you go. So this is Bill. Bill used to work at, at AIM. AIM forever yeah. ago. Processed a ton of my film, but now he works here. Bill is actually the one to talk to with this because he really built this thing. So we open the film, uh, hang it here, um, off, uh, all the rolls, um, check everything. Uh, of course, we can't do it visually because we have no vision. It's perfectly black, uh, perfectly dark. Um, and so then we, so we have to touch. We touch and feel. So we touch every roll and hug every rack and uh, touch the flags to make sure the speed indicated. Because this is a normal rack, it's not a push or a pull. We check the replenishment flags. We touch all the film across that's hanging here. You have to make believe that that's happening. Mm -hmm. Touch everything, because if there's a weight on the bottom of it, it's set perfectly. It should all be It'll just all in line. Be just uniform. And so you, you can, can tell it. that if you it's can, like out of, out of... Absolutely. Yeah. Replacement sensors, right? You yeah. Touch. And so we touch, we make sure everything's okay, and then we, then we wrap our arms around all this film that's here and make sure everything's perfect by running them under. On 120 film, there's paper. So if you don't, if you don't hug every rack, that paper might be hanging down there. Might have something hanging on there. There's not clearance in the machine. So you have to make sure that this is all perfect mm -hmm. before you put it in. So once the operators perform that, He'll then take it, he knows this whole rack is set and perfect. So he'd take the rack down like this and put it here. And this is a preloading position. You can see that it says which flags indicate which. These are replenishing flags that'll hit sensors. Oh, the proximity sensor is right underneath here. It's a little metal magnet. And when this little metal bar passes underneath it, it tells, right now this is a normal roll of 35 millimeter and it just needs to replenish. So it's just gonna replenish. But if you need to, to plus a stop, plus two stops, or minus a stop, you'd put this sensor. Can I move it here? Sure. If I move that sensor right here, let's see, right there, this is going to go underneath the plus two stop, and that means it's going to be in the chemistry a lot longer to be able to give it that plus two stops of processing. Yeah. So the dip and dunk concept is really that nothing touches the film at any time, and it's just dropping down. The weights are on the bottom of the film, and it's just sitting in the chemistry. The agitation is happening by bubbles. There's nitrogen in the developer and there's air in all the secondary chemistry. This film is uh, past the point where it's light sensitive. Yeah. Therefore we can shoot and we can, we can have the lights on and see this happen, but very few people actually see this process yeah. because we're busy running film. 
but it sits for a, the prescribed amount of time in each tank, and then it moves to the next tank. So developer and then bleach. And then bleach, and then there's a wash, and it, and it washes off the bleach, and it sits there, and then it moves into the fixed tank where the fixer removes the silver from the film, and then it moves into a wash tank where the, where the film is cleaned, and, and then into a final rinse, which is sort of a photo flow solution, uh, wetting agent, which uh, assures a clean and clear drying process. Yep. From there it goes into the space between the film processing, the wet section and the dark section, where, uh, which allows it to pass from dark to light, and that enters the dryer then. So what's the time frame from going into developer to dry film at the other end? A, a little over an hour, about an hour. About an hour? Yeah, about an hour. And we're fortunate to have a lot of film. So a lot of film makes a very healthy process. Mess, yeah, makes a better process. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So this, this developer has been the same developer that we that I've run for the last 10 years. And really? Yeah, absolutely. We just keep adding a little bit more. We measure exactly how much film goes in, uh, indicate that by little flags that are on the rack, and then a precise amount of developer and, and all the other chemistry is added to compensate for the for the amount of chemistry that was used by that rack. So it's almost like an aged developer, right? It's, it is, absolutely. It's really interesting. It's like I didn't realize that. It's like, wine, like a good wine, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, Developer's gotta be aged. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. So after processing, we head to the dryer area and this is where the film, you know, is drying and we take it out and hang it up on the rack here and we inspect it for any issues because this is when we're actually first going to visually see the this, frame. Yeah, after it's been processed. Yes, yeah. and so we're going to see if there were any issues that we need to alert the photographer about then and there. Blank rolls. Huge. Um, Do you actually call a photographer or you email them oh, or something saying yeah, there's a blank roll? Oh yeah, we call them. Oh. Or, you know, if we saw x-ray damage all over the film or if we saw, you know, drastically underexposed negatives. So this is the, the case. When we were inside and we saw all the racks that were going through the chemistry, then as it left that washing process, it went into this dryer and then they bring it out here on this end. Yeah, so they take it out right here. Um, it's still in the dryer, so it's not gonna come out right now. Okay. But then we will hang it up here hang and up inspect here. it, like I said, for any issues. We'll Excellent. then grab the twin checks. We'll make sure that we um, grab all the twin checks from the same order, put them in a box, and then get them ready for scanning. Should we head out to the scanners yep. now? To cool. the scanners we go. Awesome. Actually, I'll follow you. That way. To the scanners we go. I'll follow Albany this way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, here we go. So these are our scanners. Uh, we have our Frontier scanners over here. And okay. then we have our Noritsu scanners over there. So tell me why you would choose one or the other. Unfortunately, our answer is that it's really your personal preference. You need to do the testing and figure out which one you like better. I can tell you the technical differences and, you know, this is an older technology. The Frontier scanner the is, an, yeah, it's an older technology. So we scan one frame at a time. Um, so it is slower, takes a little bit more time. Um, whereas with the Noritsu scanner, you can kind of see from here but they actually do a pre-scan and you get to see six images on the frame at a, on the screen oh, at a time. Uh -huh. So it is a little bit more consistent that way. So you can compare them one to another. Exactly, you're not just scanning one frame at a time. Also the files that it produces just hold up a lot better when you're trying to print. Uh, if your aim is to print, then we always recommend the Noritsu scanner because you really can print those a lot bigger. Um, you know, we've seen people do 30 by 40 prints from a medium from a 120 negative, which uh -huh. is awesome. You really couldn't get that kind of quality from this scanner. From the Frontier. Yeah. My biggest question for you about scanning, and I, I ask you this up front, and that is how can you communicate with the lab in a way that allowed the operator to give you an outcome that you would like to have and see? Communication is key. That is the number one thing I'm gonna tell anybody, is that we need to know what you want or else how are we gonna be able to deliver the results you want? So on your order form, we actually have a note section where you can write in your color and density preferences. We also have color profiles, which kind of make it a little bit easier for people to request a direction. So we work with tons of photographers and all of them have a lot of them have custom color profiles and you can actually utilize their profiles on your scans if you don't have your own color profile, which kind of gives the scanner operator a direction. It's like, they're requesting this profile, I will scan that film with that profile in mind. It's not really a preset, it's really like, okay, this photographer really likes a warmer, brighter look, then okay. I'm gonna scan this film with a warmer, brighter look. So after scanning, what happens? We take it down to our digital department, 
and our digital department is gonna go through all of the scans and just check for any scan lines or any issues that we see that we need to tell the client about, like scratches or you know anything that you know they might need to get their camera cleaned because we saw it. Oh, or, really? So they, from there, just ship they it to just the client? Send, they send the scans to the client via uh, FTP zip, zip folder, and then the negative, the physical negatives, are off to net cutting. Yeah. All right, so this is where they, they get them ready to go out? Yep. We still cut all the negatives by hand. You really can't do it any other way. Yep. So after they're cut, they'll go to our shipping area and they'll be packaged up and shipped to our client. This is our big shipping area. In our past labs, our shipping area has really been the size of this counter. And so once we were able to move to Valencia, we had so much more space and so many packages, so much film that we have our own shipping area and the, the shipping carrier picks up every day at the same time and it's very That's efficient. Nice. Yeah. Give us your, your lab information so we have that. So richardphotolab.com will give you all of our Richard, really, not ri Richards. Right, Rich no Erd. S, richardphotolab.com. Um, check out our blog while you're there because it has tons of great resources for shooting film, starting to shoot film, you know, lab, lab relationship, communication, all that. And then our Instagram is really huge. It's just richardphotolab. And we just encourage you to hashtag Richard Photo Lab in all of your film images that we've scanned so we can share them on that platform. Um, and any questions you have, don't feel free to come into the lab, see us in person, call us, email us, whatever you want to do. What would it cost to shoot a photograph on this seamless setup here? If you want to know how to estimate, get our video download. It's at thuslandlens.com where you can understand the estimating process. Don't let yourself estimate without it. Get over to thuslandlens.com. All right, this has been fabulous. Albany, thank you so very of much course. for allowing us so to come. Nice you. It's been very educational for me. If you want more of this kind of content, make sure that you like us, that you follow us, you do all those kinds of things on our platform. We really want you a part of the Slant Lens family and keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking.